Yep. All right, this is uh, Mike Check from the First Four in Dayton. Uh, as we're getting ready for Fairly Dickinson, join us at 420. We will be joined by the head coach of Fairly Dickinson, Greg Horenda. Uh, the satellite coordinates are, wow, that's way louder this year. That's cool. Sounds like Star Wars. The format is 1090i. The MPEG is 4 4 The data rate is 11.914. The symbol is 7.2. The FEC is 5 over 6, DVB, S2, QP, SK. Keep going. So in J school, they taught us to talk about what we had for breakfast, but I won't do that. Uh, again, we're scheduled to be joined by uh, student athletes from Fairleigh Dickinson at 420, and then we'll be joined by the head coach of Fairleigh Dickinson, Greg Horenda, at 440 before they have their open practice here at UD Arena. Now, we ask that media coming in silence your cell phones. There's no flash photography or video recording allowed, but you can use the AV distribution sites across the hall for video and audio. For transcripts of the press conference, you can go to ncaa.com slash transcripts. We'll also set out hard copies of the quotes and transcriptions next to the media entrance, next to the entrance to the media room, which is up the hall. And when you ask a question, we please ask that you direct it to good, cool. Need level four. Okay. It's for the AV. Uh, okay. So, uh, again, we're scheduled to be joined by uh, student athletes from Fairleigh Dickinson at 440. This is a level check for the AV sites across the hall. Uh, also, post game procedures for tomorrow night and Wednesday. We'll have the winning team first, which is opposite of what you'll see as you head to first and second round sites. Uh, the winning team will have their press conference first after the game. Uh, also, the cooling off periods for the locker rooms, if you want to know about that, uh, they're essentially 10 minutes for the winning team, and they're essentially 15 minutes for the losing team. So the locker rooms are open uh, 10 and 15 minutes after the game is over for the winner and loser, respectively. Then the locker room is open uh, for media access after that point. Uh, good.
We're now being joined by student athletes from Fairleigh Dickinson, Darian Anderson, Marcus Towns, Earl Potts Jr., and Stephen Jiggetts. We will uh, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. There's no flash photography or video recording allowed. We ask that you keep your audio recording devices off the table up here, but there are AV distribution sites directly across the tunnel here in the back of the room. For transcripts of this press conference, you can go to ncaa.com slash transcripts, and we'll also set out hard copies of the transcriptions next to the entrance uh, to the media room. So when asking you a question, we please ask that you address your question to a specific student athlete and also that you identify yourself by name and affiliation before asking your question. So we will open up the floor for questions. Yeah, raise your hand, we'll bring the mic around here on the left. Hey guys, Andy Vasquez with the Bergen Record. Uh, we'll start with, with Darian and Earl. Well, just what does it feel like to be here um, I'm sure this is something you guys have been thinking about for a long time, but what does it feel like to finally be here? Darian, if you can answer that first. It's an unreal feeling. I, I never thought I'd be here this early, but with the work we put in, it just happened to be a blessing to be here. Earl? Um, you know, it's all we worked for all season, and it feels good to be here. You know, hard work paid off, and the summer was a huge time of the year for us, and we just gelled, and became a family on the court. Here on the right. South Southam with the News Press, Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, what have you guys seen of FGCU? What's the initial scout on the ways that they're most dangerous? What do you guys have to guard against? Steven, if you can answer that, please. Okay, um, I'll say like, they're really like big inside and they uh, drive the ball and I attack the basket real well. Of course, they're a real good team because they wouldn't be here. If they wasn't, so we got to come ready to play, of course. Right here on the left. Andy Vasquez from the Bergen Record again. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind all answering this, a, a couple years ago, Florida Gulf Coast obviously had a, a great run. Uh, is that something that, that you're aware of? Is it kind of cool to play them, given their history? And do you think, like, hey, maybe – maybe this time around we can do something similar. Is this, do you view this, this as that kind of an opportunity? Stefan, can you start? Sorry, I mispronounced your name. Um, we believe that we could possibly do the same thing. Our goal is to make it to the Sweet 16 and then play from there, so. Bro? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we have to come out and play the first 40 minutes and then move on from there, but we have a good chance of making a run. Marcus? Yeah. Um, we're all happy that we uh, that we made the tournament, and we're happy to be a part of this. But our main goal is is to win games, and that's what we came here for. So we're just like I said, like Earl said, we're looking forward to this forty minutes, and then we're playing on from there, and we'll try to make it run like hopefully they did. It's a good experience to be able to be here and play a good team such as Florida Golf Coast. It's it's nice to play a team that we know we know of their like history, and we're just gonna try to win it on the forty minutes. Any further questions for our student athletes? Yep, here on the left. Hey, Andy Vasquez from the record again. Uh, you guys are are one of the youngest teams in the tournament. Uh, it's that can that be an advantage? Uh, what do you think about playing in front of this spotlight and and can being young and kind of maybe uh, you know not having the experience before be an advantage for you? And again, I'm sorry if you guys wouldn't all mind answering that. Uh, we'll start with Darian this time. I think, it, I think it's a good advantage because we we've known each other for a while. It's easier to get along. We're around the same age. We're young. We don't use that as an excuse for what we have accomplished, and we think we'll be able to we'll be able to make it. Marcus. Uh, yeah, just to backtrack over what Darren said, uh, we knew since the beginning of the year that we were the third youngest team in the country, and we knew we were going to have to play with that in our minds, and that just kind of gave us an edge, and we uh, we, we fought all hard all, all this season, and and we got to this point, so we know that we it, it could have some type of advantage, but even though we, have, we, are, we are the youngest team, we still play with a killer instinct. Earl? Um, yeah, being a young team, uh, we have a lot of composure for being as young as we are, and we play with a lot of energy and get up and down. And 
you know, we play a good amount of defense too. So I don't think being young is a disadvantage, but you're right when you say that it's an advantage. Say, um, being so as you know, we had to pick it up because coach looked at us like we were seniors. So we want like the typical sophomores that you would see. So between like, like within the team, you know, we just had to like stay strong, I guess you could say. Any further questions? All right, guys, thanks for your time. Good luck tomorrow night. And next we are scheduled to be joined by Greg Horenda, the head coach of Fairleigh Dickinson at 440.
We're now being joined by the head coach of Fairleigh Dickinson, Greg Horenda. Uh, coach, if you like, you can start with an opening statement, then we'll sure. open the floor for questions. Um, first of all, I'd just like to uh, tell everyone here how honored we are to be in Dayton, Ohio. Um, I just went to, what was the name of the, uh, the smokehouse? Smoke City Barbecue. Smoke City Barbecue. Had a great rib sandwich and uh, got treated really well there. But our, our team is uh, ecstatic to be here. Um, in the first four, we're privileged and honored. Uh, Dayton University in Dayton, Ohio is a prestigious basketball um, city. Uh, my basketball team is very young. We're the third youngest team in America. We were picked ninth out of uh, 10 teams in the Northeast Conference. Um, last year, we lost 15 straight games and won our last game. Um, so this team has come from the depths of college basketball to uh, the elite, and uh, we're just very proud and privileged and humbled to be here um, and, and play uh, such an opponent as Florida Gulf Coast. Joe Dooley is a New Jersey native, as am I, so he'll know um, me, and I'll know him. In Jersey, everybody knows everybody, and uh, Joe's a really good coach and has a really good team, um, so we're going to have to play very, very well to have a chance to win tomorrow night, but we're very Excited, my team is a confident young team. I'm very proud of them, proud of Fairleigh Dickinson University, our, our administration, our uh, athletic department, all of our teams and coaches and staff, and uh, we're just literally uh, ecstatic to be here today. Questions for Coach, here on the left. Uh, Seth Zoffian with the News Press, Fort Myers, Florida. Greg, welcome. Um, Thank you. I was wondering if you could comment on FGCU's size. Uh, that's one of the strengths that they seem to try and bring to the game. I was wondering if you could comment on, on that, if that's a strength of theirs, uh, any advantage they might have on you guys. And yep. in any way, the contrast for how they play now, to some degree, versus the team that everyone came to know three years ago with the up-tempo and all that stuff. Sure. Um, Obviously, uh, to be quite honest with you, when we saw Florida Gulf Coast, go, it's a sexy opponent. You know, the, the name is out there. Um, they had an incredible run, um, and now they're a totally different team, but a very, very good team. Uh, size doesn't bother me, but size uh, that rebounds and blocks shots and shoots a very high percentage, scare, uh, well, don't, doesn't scare me, but... It's, it's something that we are very aware of. Um, Joe is an assistant coach at Kansas, so when we watched tape late into the night, we saw a lot of Kansas tendencies. Um, uh, they're good. They're deep. Um, they don't take a lot. They're different than us. They don't take as many threes. They take good shots, quality shots. They guard. I mean, they do everything really, really well. Um, so the size is one thing, but the talent and the coaching uh, and just how hard they play um, is, is something that, you know, we're going to have to contend with. Yep, here again on the left. Just a quick follow to that is, are you guys more in style like FGCU used to be than FGCU I is hope, now? I, I wish we, I hope we are <laughs> because they did some great, great things, but we are who we are. You know, we're from New Jersey. We're a blue-collar team um, that likes to run, and we shoot threes. We try to get to the basket. I've said before, we're not the greatest rebounding team, and we're not the greatest defensive team all the time, but these guys find ways um, to win and to compete. As I said, we, uh, we were picked ninth. Um, we lost 15 games, so we've been on that other side of college basketball, and I, I just give my staff and my players credit for just working their tails off to get to this spot. But uh, just to follow up real quick, at Wagner, after all the storming of the court, we met at half court and I told the team that enjoy this, um, but we're going to the tournament to win game or games. That's the next goal. And, and it, that's going to be very difficult to do, but when you pick ninth and you win on the road against a great Wagner team, that was hard to do. So we're excited to be here, but uh, we want to win a basketball game tomorrow night, and we know we have to play great to do that. You're on the right. 
Laurel Failure from the Naples Daily News. Um, what's been the key to your turnaround from last year? Yeah, it's it's a, it's. I, I've been. I can't really answer that question clearly, but the, the, what I can tell you is this: uh, If you're a coach and you believe in your team, uh, that's great. But if you're a coach and your team believes in the team, then you become a great coach. And that's our kids believe in themselves. They believe in what they do. We, we invite, we have open practices every day and we, we have people come in and just watch and, because I like to show my team off. They play, there's no out of bounds in our practices. There's no jump ball. So if two people grab the basketball and usually it's a quick whistle and the referees get in and they don't want to, there's tussles and it's, but, and there's, we, we don't have altercations because there's complete respect if, when, when you have the, your first player and your 12th player playing as hard, there can't be any conflicts because there's mutual respect. And then when we play other people, I think that's what's happened now. When I got the job here, uh, we weren't in a, in a good place in our program, but now we have the respect of our, our conference most of all. And in New Jersey, I think people respect us. And now it's a national stage, and we need the nation to respect us. But in between that, uh, is Florida Gulf Coast. So, you know, we have to respect them, but we have to play harder and play smarter and, and, and do all the right things uh, in order to win. Here on the aisle, on the left. Hey, Coach, Andy Vasquez with the Bergen hey, Ranger. What's up, man? Um, given, you, you mentioned being on the national stage and given Florida Gulf Coast and their history, do you view this as a, as a unique opportunity to kind of raise your profile or, or get people to notice you guys? Yeah. I, <laughs> I think so, and I, I told my I, I told my players, like we don't we early in the year we didn't draw a lot of crowds, and we, you know people didn't really get behind us, and I and I just told them every day I said I apologized because we had a a better record on the road than at home. And I said I, someday I'm going to get you to a building where you're playing in front of a lot of people, um, and sure enough, we are, and now to 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 play in this tournament is already is exposed our program to just unbelievable things um, but to, to win a game in the tournament I think further validates what we do at Fairleigh Dickinson every day um, last year we were the number one grade point average in men's basketball in the Northeast Conference this past semester we were just about a 3.2 again so we have kids going to class going into the community believing in what they do and I know this sounds kind of like hokey but it's it's the truth and that's this is my 33rd year of coaching college basketball at my first press conference I had the boys and girls club of Lodi and Hackensack the directors there before I ever met them I had my assistant make sure they were there and they were introduced before I even went down there and we've got a great relationship with those guys and um, so Andy you know you're this is where from Bergen County, and we're very proud of it. And but I think you're right. I think um, playing and competing, win or lose, is people are going to look and say, "Wow, that's a team that plays together, plays hard, um, and is on a national stage." And you know, we're we're proud to represent, you know, Bergen County and especially our university. We're here on our right, right up against the pillar. Greg Hyde, Jen Tolan from the Telegram in Worcester. Oh my God, how you doing? Good, how are you? Yes, good. Um, can you talk about how your years at Holy Cross shaped you as yes. a coach? Yes. I, I, I wouldn't be sitting here um, if it wasn't for George Blaney. And George Blaney uh, was the head coach of Holy Cross for so many years um, and then became the associate head coach for Jim Calhoun at U University of Connecticut. And George Blaney offered me my first Division I assistant job in Worcester. Uh, and not for that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. He taught me how to be a coach, how to be a man, how to be a professional. Um, I'm forever indebted. I say Coach Calhoun's a Hall of Fame coach, and George Blaney's a Hall of Fame person. And that's no knock on Jim Calhoun, but George Blaney is a man's man. We went to the same high school. Um, I had the same high school coach as Coach Blaney and Bob Hurley, the head coach of St. Anthony in, in Jersey City. So uh, I love Holy Cross. I applied for the job twice <laughs> and, and w really wanted the job, to be quite honest with you, uh, but never got it. And um, that's the business. But 
Uh, I, uh, I have dear friends that are now doctors and lawyers and mayors of Peabody, Massachusetts. Kid, I recruited Ted Bentoncourt, the mayor of Peabody. Um, so I, I, we won 99 games in five years. Won a NC, we went to the NCAA tournament, went to the NIT, and you know recruited and coached some fine young men. So I, I love Holy Cross. I love Worcester. I love Shrewsbury Street too. Um, are you familiar with their run to get to the NCAA oh tournament? Oh my God! And what do you uh, think of that? It's a great story. Billy Carmody was out of a job after Northwestern, and I invited him and begged him to come. He lived in Asbury, New Jersey, and he wound up coming up to our practices in the summer and just watched our team. And uh, we talked basketball. And um, I know we we text all the time. And I loved Billy making the run into the tournament. And I'm not surprised. Uh, it was going to take him a little while to figure out their system and the players to figure him out. He's a basketball genius. Um, so I'm just really very, you know, I thought we might play Holy Cross, quite honest with you, um, and that would have been great. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're not playing each other, and hopefully uh, Holy Cross and Billy wins, and I'd like to win too. You're on the left. Coach, you talked about this being a, an atmosphere that you wanted to get the players to, and this is going to be one like they they haven't played in before. How do right. you, you you have a young team like you said? How do you get them ready for this and make sure it's not you know too much to handle? We were just at Wright State and had practice and had one of the best one hour and twenty minutes. Like these kids, uh, hopefully we'll play well tomorrow night so that, so you can see Andy. But we've got a team, a young team, and usually young good teams are cocky. They're not cocky at all. They're just very aware of where they are and not in awe of what they're doing. They're just very, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm just, you know, I think that the key is our practices are so much the same every day. And we started in July. We went to summer school together. So you're talking about July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. You're talking about nine months of just we just bang the drum, and we, 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 do, we talk about if you keep on digging hard enough, you're going to find gold. And these kids dig and dig and dig, and uh, I, I, I just, we might be nervous a little. I think if you're not nervous, you're not normal. Um, but I think at the end of the day, they just play basketball, and they're, they're you know, mature beyond their years. And I'm, I'm just a lucky, lucky guy. It starts with my staff, Bruce Hamburger, Dwayne Lee, Winston Smith, Grant Bill Meyer, who left us and went to Seton Hall, just won a Big East championship, so, uh, and Pete Lapis, who is the son of Steve Lapis, who um, is the former Villanova coach. And, um, I, I, I'm surrounding myself with great people, so I'm just kind of the lucky guy in the middle, but I, uh, I love it, all, my staff, and my staff should get a lot of credit. Any further questions for Coach? All right, Greg, thank you for your time. Great. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you very much. For Florida Gulf Coast, uh, 505 will be joined by Florida Gulf Coast student athletes.
All right, we're now being joined by Florida Gulf Coast student athletes, Julian DeBose and Mark Eddie Norelia. We will uh, open the floor for questions for our student athletes. Yep, here on the left. How'd practice go? Uh, Seth Zoffi and Fort Myers News Press. How'd practice go today, guys? You know, feeling right, and both of you for that book for both you and Julian. How's the ankle feeling? Uh, Julian and then Mark. First off, uh, practice was pretty good. You know, we were out, got out there and got competitive. You know, trying to get ready for tomorrow. Um, as far as my ankle, it's feeling pretty good. I mean, I'm just excited to be here, excited to uh, compete. Um, practice was great. We had a lot of energy. It was pretty vocal, which I like, and was we having fun with the whole process, which is great. Yep, here in the front on the right. As you know, Dana Caldwell, Naples Daily News. Uh, I think we're down to just kind of off the wall questions at this point. Uh, Julian, did you pack your hoverboard? And also, uh, Mark Eddy on the flight over. This, guy, this guy's got energy all the time. Even when you're supposed to be sleeping on the plane, he's got energy all the time, doesn't he? Well, I definitely didn't get a chance to bring my hoverboard. Uh, apparently, I think they exploded on the plane ride or something like that, I heard. And uh, Mark has been my roommate for three, uh, my whole time here at FGCU. Definitely the most energy out of all my teammates on all the teams I've been on. Oh, I, I ain't even expecting um, an answer, but um, no, nah, I just like having fun with that, with everything. It makes it a lot easier and just makes it good. You're on the left. Uh, coach had mentioned the other day that um, Fairley was in some ways a little bit reminiscent of some of the A-Sun teams in some ways. Is that still carrying through for what you're seeing? Maybe a little smaller than you guys like to get up uh, up tempo a little bit, shoot a lot of threes. Uh, Mark Eddie, can you answer that first? Can you say that again? Are they somewhat like an A Sun team in some ways? A little smaller than you, like to shoot a lot of threes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, coach showed us some film um, earlier, and they're very similar to some of the teams in our conference in some aspects. Yes, you're right. Julian. Uh, they're definitely, you know, similar to some of the teams we've played in our conference. Like you said, you know, like to get up and down, drive the ball, shoot a lot of threes. Uh, credit to them, you know, they had a great run at the end of the season, just as we did. And, you know, we're just glad to be here, be able to compete. Here in the back on the left. Angelo Caruso, NBC2 Sports. Uh, did you guys expect the welcome that you got in Dayton, and can you just kind of go over that with the bagpipes and the fight song and just everything? Julian, can you answer that first? Well, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, this is my first time being this in this experience. Um, just getting off the, the the bus was, you know, it was great. You know, uh, I, I did notice the FGCU fight song. Those cookies were pretty great. Um, I'm just, you know, blown away by by the the welcome, and I'm I'm glad to be experiencing it. Mark, um, usually I see that on TV after a win, but <laughs> they did it for us just coming into town. That was pretty great. I enjoyed every last second of it. Yep, in the back. You know, three years ago, FGCU obviously made magic happen, but we expected that team to to maybe make a couple more runs in the NCAA tournament, or at least get there. The fact that they didn't does does urgency there for you guys, knowing that your predecessors looked like that they could do it, and just really kind of taking the task at hand and really seizing the moment. Julian, um, I mean, giving credit to those guys, you know, they took advantage of their opportunities. Uh, we're, you know, an entirely different team. Obviously, you know, seeing what they the legacy they've left us all being competitors, you know, we want to do as best as we can, and that's all we can pretty pretty much hope for. I think Julian kind of covered it there because we're, pre we're pretty competitive as well, so we want to do the best. We want to be the best team we can be. We're not going to compare ourselves to them necessarily, but be the best FGCU team that we can be for this year. Here on the left again. As enjoyable as this is and as hard as you've worked to get here, how much hunger does that give you to obviously want Mark more days Julian. of this. Um, a lot. Um, like Julian said, we're competitive. So if we're playing basketball, whatever it is we're doing, we're going to be very competitive and want to win and give our best effort at, at all times. 
Can you ask the question again? <laughs> as fun as this is, how much does that make you have a thirst for a hunger for more to get beyond, you know, to keep this taste going beyond Tuesday? Uh, well, um, just, you know, continuing to win definitely uh, makes each and every one of us more hungry. You know, we, we want to compete, and my, being my last go around, you know, I want to keep playing as long as possible. So just being here and practicing and, you know, seeing all this, you know, amazement around March and, you know, just seeing my team, you know, get better, you know, all through the years definitely make me, you know, more hungry. Any further questions for our student athletes? Yep, here in the back on the left. The arena is going to be packed, probably one of the biggest arenas that you guys have played in. Uh, are there going to be nerves, or, or is it just another basketball game to you? Julian? I mean, every basketball player at some point in their you know, career has a little bit of nerves. But at this moment, we're just here to you know, enjoy and, and compete. If there are nerves, I'm sure they'll be gone just like that once, once the ball touches their hands as soon as they come in the game. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna be a little bit uptight in the beginning, but as soon as you start playing, all that goes away. You just wanna have fun. You've been doing it your whole life, so you get comfortable. On the left again. Just kicking off this 2016 NCAA tournament, what kind of an honor is it that the fact that you guys are gonna be the first ones on T, you, you guys are gonna be the ones to really set the tone maybe of this whole dance? Mark? Um, I think it's great, and I just wanna go out there and do, we just wanna go out there and do our best and just represent, um. NCAA and our conference the right way? Uh, it's definitely an honor, you know, uh, representing our university, Florida Gulf Coast, and just being able to compete in March Madness is, you know, all a college athlete can, college basketball player can ask for. So just putting your best foot forward when you go out there and compete is all you can really ask for. And back again. Has there been a different message from Coach Dooley since, since all this has happened, just knowing that you're a 16 seed going into this whole Dayton experience? Has he told you anything different uh, before tomorrow's game? Julian? Um, really, the only different thing is that, you know, we're here now and to enjoy every moment of it. That, of it. Other than that, you know, coaches are going to coach us the same way as if it was the first game of the season. And that's what I like about Coach. You know, he treats us the same when we're winning and the same when we're losing. Mark? Yeah, just like Julian said, you just make sure you enjoy everything we're doing. He said, don't take it for granted because there's a lot of guys who wish it could be here right now where we at. So he's saying enjoy, but at the same time, remember it's a business trip. Go out there and compete and give your all. On the left. How much did you guys pack? <clears throat> for the whole Julian? weekend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you know, we have the playing game. So um, with that being, yeah, the first four, first four game. With that being said, uh, we have the opportunity to, you know, play f further, so we had to pack for the whole week. Mark? Yeah, I already said it, but we packed for the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? All right, Mark, Eddie, and Julian, thank you for the time. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you.
Now we're being joined by the head coach of the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles, Joe Dooley. Coach, I didn't see that. You guys got it. Thank you. Coach, if you like, you can start with an opening statement, uh, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Well, obviously, we're excited to be here and uh, had a good trip up, and we're able to get some practice time in. And uh, obviously, the atmosphere, people have bragged about the atmosphere here in Dayton. We're excited to, to see it tomorrow night. Questions for Coach? Yeah, here on the left. Seth Safian with Fort Myers News Press. How you doing, Joe? Hey, Seth. How are you? I'm good. Is this your first NCAA, your first NCAA tournament press conference? Uh, yes. Never at GW? No. How you feeling? Pretty good. Not bad. No, it's an exciting time. You know, we, we, it's something we've worked for all year, and I think the guys are, are fired up about being here. And uh, it's, a, it's a, great, a great experience for our program. What worries you about Fairly? Balance. I mean, I think they, they can really, with five double figure scores, essentially, I think they can really, uh, very good driving downhill. Greg's done a good job giving those young guys confidence. Uh, Anderson and Jiggers and uh, Holloway and all those guys are all, all guys that can hurt you in a bunch of different ways. Yep, you're on the left again. They're the third youngest team in D1. You guys are pretty young. Is that is that a wash, or, or do, you, do you have an edge there somehow? I, I think it. You know, I, I think there'll be jitters, and probably on both sides. You know, it's the first game NCAA tournament. Uh, I, I, everywhere we've been, when you're in the first round of the NCAA tournament, it seems like guys are a little sped up or a little jittery. I mean, I think it'll, it'll take a while, little while to ease into the game, probably. But uh, I think they've done a good job. They've had some good. You know, they had a little rough start against Wagner in a conference championship, and really bounced back at the end of the first half and. We've had some ups and downs starting as well, so I think it'll. Both teams are in the same situation. I'll have to again. And just because they can, they're coming from a place with low expectations starting the season anyway, does that make them more dangerous somehow? I think you know Greg's really done a great job. It's his third year. He's done a really good job of getting you know their class balance is, is really good. They got a lot of young guys. Um, they played well at the end of the season, as you saw. I mean they've they, they've had some pretty decisive wins. They played really well against Wagner and uh, as well as against Mount St. Mary's. I was very impressed with a couple of the games we watched. And I think they would be playing with a lot of confidence right now, just like our guys are. Any further questions for Coach? Yep, here on the right. Yeah, Joe, you've had a little time to uh, – Dana Caldwell, Naples Daily News. Mm -hmm. you've, uh, you've had a little time to break down FDU a little bit more than when we talked yesterday. What, uh, what, what do you see as the keys in this thing, Joe? Well, one of the, when you look at their, how aggressive they are, uh, you know, they put up points, especially in transition, very good in the half court off of ball screen situations. Um, I, I think those things where they've got five guys that essentially score most of their points, and they can be balanced. They can hurt you on the inside with Holloway, but they can also spread you out and shoot the ball from the perimeter. With guys like Potts and Anderson can, can do a bunch of different things. You guys ready? I think the guys are excited. Uh, you know, it's, it was a quick turnaround. Like you said, we got here, we practiced. Um, and, you know, now the big thing is to get some prep more preparation and get our guys some rest and, and focused. Here on the right. Hi, Mitch Stacy from the Associated Press. Uh, a lot of people know the name of your school because of uh, 2013. Um, obviously, it's not the same bunch of guys. What do you, what do you tell your team about that notoriety? To take pride in. I mean, I, I think the university is so young, and our program is so young. When you've, you look at some, you know, fairly established name programs. We've been to two NCAA tournaments in the last four years. We've been to an NIT. We've been to one 20 or more four straight years. For a program that's been Division One eligible, I think it's you know we talk about having that's some create some tradition. We don't have much tradition because we're too young to have tradition. You know, there's a lot of places that have bad tradition because they haven't been very successful for a long time. So we, we try to tell our guys that listen, this, that they started something. We need to keep it going, and it's on your shoulders to keep expectations and hopefully to keep this program going in the right direction. Here on the right. Hey, Coach, question for you. Um, just take me through the reception today and just the support you think you guys are going to get here in Dayton and just uh, how everyone's just kind of backing you guys and the excitement that the community Southwest Florida has. And hopefully you guys have a lot of people travel up, or travel up here to see the game too. Well, first of all, everybody that's played in this game, when I've talked to several people that have told me they've played in the site, have said it's big time. And, you know, obviously Dayton's got great fans herself, but I think it's a great basketball area. 
and people have raved about how they've been treated. It's raved about the uh, raved about the crowd. Uh, you know, I think it's exciting. Obviously, our fans have been unbelievable. I mean, I, we never would have expected the type of support we've gotten the last several years, and I think the people of, of Southwest Florida have backed our program and supported us, and uh, you know, I know they're looking forward to us watching our play tomorrow night. Some of them that got here, I know it was a quick turnaround, but I know a lot of them will be back home watching and rooting for us tomorrow night. Here on the left. Uh, the guys did at least admit that they've packed for the weekend. I, I assume Fairley's probably packed for the, the weekend, I would, too. I would expect everybody to be packed for the weekend right now. I think it's, you know, that's part of what it is. And, if, you know, I, I, if I was them, I'd be confident. I think we're confident. I think people at this time of the year, you're, it's, it's survive in advance. And the other thing is have some fun with it. Any further questions for Coach Dooley? All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Good Thank luck you. tomorrow night. Appreciate it. Thanks. Got about 20 minutes until our next press conference. We are scheduled to be joined by student athletes from the Wichita State Shockers at 550.